Now let me write down what will happen if you're given three vectors. So when you're given three vectors and you need to make them all orthogonal, you'll do it in two steps. First, you'll pick one of them as your starting vector and you will leave it alone. Then you'll make the second one, oh this hurts, orthogonal to first, and now you have two that are orthogonal and third that's not. And then you will make it, and then you'll make the third one orthogonal to the first two. And I will tell you, I will show you how to do it, that will be intuitive. But there will be one thing that remains to be clarified. And I'll point out what that is, and then I'll let you clarify it on its own. So let me erase the board and get to this question. Meanwhile, you can think about what you think it will take. Okay, ready? I will keep this discussion algebraic. I could draw the geometric picture and go back to the motivation, but I think we now see that of the algebraic way of thinking is just as effective. So suppose we have three vectors, A, B, and C. That's not orthogonal. And we're going to turn it into an orthogonal set, A1, V1. And they, that set is orthogonal. Once again, any two vectors are orthogonal to each other. So we know what to do with the first two. The first one you leave alone, so before we really left it alone, but now we'll rename it A1. So A1 is the same as A. B1, well we know what B1 is. B1 is B, and you have to subtract from it its projection onto A. Okay? With one small correction to this formula, which will be much more important in the second step. As you go through Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization, you always use the most current vectors available. So here I will actually refer to A1, even though it's the same as A, but you, or you keep using vectors that you've already created. This will be much more important in the second step, when we go after C1, and you pretty much can guess what we need to do. We need to make C orthogonal to A, so we'll subtract projection onto A from C. And then we also need it to make it orthogonal to, no, not B, B1, right? We're building A1, B1, C1. And I know that you were going to give, I knew that you were going to give me the wrong answer because I just said the wrong thing. We need to make it orthogonal to A1 and then to B1. We have to make it orthogonal to the set that we've built so far. So first, I will subtract the projection from C. I will subtract from C its projection onto A1. At this point we have a vector B1 that's orthogonal to A1. And now we have a, ve a vector C1 that's also, that's also orthogonal to A1. Now we have to make it also orthogonal to B1. So I will subtract from C, oh, I will also subtract its projection onto B1. Does that sound good? Or does, does, does that sound possibly treacherous? So let me write it down, and then, and then you'll tell me if you have a sense that there is a danger in doing this. So minus. First of all, you're noticing a little bit of a triangular structure to all of this. The next one, if this is correct, would have three subtractions. So when in a little bit we uh, express this in the matrix notation, it'll involve triangular matrices. Won't be surprising. Did somebody say that they sense a danger here? I'll let you think about what will happen here if the three vectors are coplanar. I'm pausing for dramatic effect. I don't want the answer now. Okay, so now let's focus on the case where they're not coplanar. They're linearly independent. By the way, I should have objected to the term coplanar when we're talking about general vectors. Coplanar is a geometric term. 
You should have said linearly dependent, which is the same as coplanar for... Okay, what's the possible danger here? Does anybody sense the danger? Yeah, what would you say? That's, that's actually related to what, the, uh, what I think the danger is. He's suggesting instead of doing it in one step, do it in two steps. Making it orthogonal to A1 first, and then taking that vector, which is already different from C, and making that orthogonal to B1 by the same notion. That's actually not a bad idea. And I, once again, I will leave it up to you to explain why you would end up with the exact same vector, and you can actually do it at once. And I also want to tell you that both of these approaches, whether you do this one or Cauchy's, one at a time, one half step at a time, both of them have this lingering danger, and it's this. The logic is, let's throw this in to make it orthogonal to A1. And that's actually, so we're doing kind of a violent thing to a vector, right? I still, even though we're just geometrically speaking, subtracting the projection, I kind of think of it as just turning it and making it orthogonal. In my head, that's kind of my intuition. And so here we're turning it and making it orthogonal to A1, and then turning it some more and making it orthogonal to B1, intuitively speaking. But when you do that second turn, how do you know that you didn't mess up? It's being orthogonal to A1. Right? You're reorienting the vector, geometrically speaking. So you, you start with 3. Okay? First, you make this one orthogonal to this. Great. Then, let's think of it in two steps. You make this one orthogonal to A1, and then you turn it some more to make it orthogonal. I'm sorry, you turn it this way first to make it orthogonal to A1, and then you turn it some more. I turned it the wrong way. You turn it first to make it orthogonal to A1, and then you turn it some more to make it orthogonal to B1. But how do you know that you didn't mess up orthogonality to A1 when you made it orthogonal to B1? So there are two possible answers to this question. Number one, just like we did before over here, just go ahead and double check that this is indeed orthogonal to both A1 and B1. Just do the dot product with A1, and you'll see, lo and behold, it's orthogonal to A1, and dot, dot it with B1, and lo and behold, it's orthogonal to B1. So, you know, our worry was misplaced. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to really think through the fact that it's crucial that A1 and B1 are already orthogonal. So if you think, go back to the geometric interpretation of it, you'll realize that when the second turning takes place, it all happens within the plane that's orthogonal to A1 already. And whatever turning within a or plane orthogonal to A1 you do, won't break your orthogonality to A1. In other words, it's crucial that B1 is already orthogonal to A1. That's why it doesn't break orthogonality to A1. If that wasn't the case, if A1 and B1 were not orthogonal, right, and you did this in an attempt to make C orthogonal to both A1 and B1, it would actually fail. So it's critical that A1 and B1 are already orthogonal. And then this works. And then, I'm shifting gears, you know exactly how to generalize it to four vectors. And on and on and on. And now, you have a set of vectors that's orthogonal. And once again, what's the advantage of an orthogonal set? Well, decomposition is easy. 